Hey guys, it's been a while, but I thought I'd post a video. Here we've got a physics type question and also includes graphs. So let's uh, give it a go. Question 10. Which of the following best represents the velocity of the ball with respect to time between its release and recapture by the trigger mechanism? So there's a lot going on in the question itself, but something to take note of straight away is the fact that all the options A, B, C, and D, they are representations of the velocity of the ball with respect to time. Okay, velocity versus time. Okay, and if it mentions it in this order, usually the first parameter will be the y-axis and the second will be the x-axis. So if I was to draw a velocity and time curve, the axes would look something like this. Uh, and so that we get our bearings as well, let's just have a look at some of the options. Let's look at option A just as an example. With option A, so what's going on here, right? First of all, that horizontal line is most likely the x-axis. So that's, you can think of that as the time axis, okay? So as we're going from left to right, that is um, as time progresses. The vertical, um, the vertical axis will be velocity, okay? So if I was to, if I was to actually put the axis in, this is how it would kind of look. So that horizontal axis there is essentially representing when the velocity is zero, okay? So those points here, here, and here, they are zero. Above that horizontal line, they are positive values for the velocity, and below they will be negative. So if I was to quickly look at what's going on with the velocity over time, and this is essentially what's going on with all of the diagrams with some slight um, differences, which we're gonna talk about, we can see that at the very beginning, the velocity is zero, okay? And as we progress, I'm just gonna draw some more dots here. As we progress to the right, the velocity is positive and it is increasing, okay? So it's getting more positive. There comes a point where now the velocity decreases or becomes less positive, okay? And then in the middle, so at some point, it goes back to zero again. As time goes by, the velocity becomes negative and it becomes increasingly negative. Okay, so more negative over time. And in a similar way, it reaches its most negative value, but then now it becomes less negative and it goes back to zero. Okay, so that's how we interpret these diagrams, essentially. So remember, they are representing the velocity of the ball as time goes by, the velocity. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this for a second. I'm gonna to go to the question um, stimulus. So when a spring is compressed a distance x, the force in the spring is given by f is equal to kx, where k is a constant associated with that particular spring. Okay, the figure shows a compressed spring as in a pop gun with a ball sitting on it held in position by a trigger mechanism. So I note that it's talking about the spring. So the equation that was mentioned before is most likely going to be important to understand what the spring perhaps is doing to the ball. If we keep on going, it says that the trigger is released. The compression in the spring is released. The ball is projected vertically. Okay, so what it's saying is we are letting go of the spring. The spring is going to shoot the ball up vertically. Soon after, the ball falls back on the spring again, compressing it again. At maximum compression, the trigger mechanism holds the compressed spring and the ball once again. So what's, what's interesting is if you take note of those two paragraphs where it talks about when the trigger is released, that's really the beginning of this scenario. It says that the ball is then projected. And you'll notice that in all of the options, there are three distinct regions. And I'm going to separate them out with a vertical line, like this, roughly. <clears throat> so in the first region, if you kind of coincide that with the text, the first region is most likely talking about when the ball is still on the spring and it's being pushed off by the spring, okay? So the compression in the spring is released, okay? So this is when the compression 
oops, compression is released. And the ball is still sitting on top of the spring. Okay. In the middle section, the, the ball has been projected vertically. So in other words, it's under the influence of gravity alone. It's no longer sitting on the spring. Okay. I'm going to draw a few um, diagrams to represent this in a moment. And then the final part is when the ball falls back on the spring again. Okay. So the ball is back on the spring. Okay. And the spring is compressed again. Uh, compression again I'll just write that in brackets okay so the spring uh, was squished down it was compressed it's released so it uh, pushes the ball up the ball f uh, flies off the spring essentially projected vertically and then it's going to come back and push the spring back down again so those are the three uh, major regions I'm going to talk a bit about the the first region which is when the spring is pushing the ball up okay, and it's being released. So if I take option A, I'm just going to draw that one, but I will go through the other options as well. That first region kind of looks like that. It's a bit like half of a, a hill or a mound. It's, so it's curved. It's not um, linear. I'm just going to let's go back to the diagram and we'll talk about uh, we'll talk a little bit about the spring and the force due to the spring. Okay, so there's that equation. Let's write it down. F is equal to kx. And we're, we're going to talk about what x means. So imagine if the spring was relaxed. It wasn't squished down, compressed down. Let's say that's the natural length of the spring. Okay, so the spring's completely relaxed. It's not compressed. That's how long it normally would be. So... The definition of x is the distance by which we compress the spring. So that would be x, okay? The distance by which we have compressed, squished the spring down. When we release the spring, x will decrease, okay? So if I draw a picture of what it might look like a moment after the trigger um, is released, it might look something like this. Okay, so the ball is going to be a bit higher up. And in terms of how much the spring has been compressed, or is compressed, I should say, it is going to be less. And it will eventually get to a point where it will be completely relaxed. Okay, it's going to reach its uh, normal length, essentially, its natural length. And at this point, the ball will just be sitting on top of it. Okay, it's about to be released. So the pictures that I've just drawn is representing the first part of the diagram, essentially. Okay, that little, uh, for option A, that little curve up. Okay, now let's relate that to the equation here, so x. So x is proportional to f, which is the force. So in other words, if x goes up, the force goes up, and it's a linear relationship. If x was to go down, the force would also go down. And we know that as time progresses, the very beginning of this question, that x will decrease. So what I'm going to say is, as time progresses, okay, you don't have to write this if you were doing this on your whiteboard, okay, but as time progresses, what's going on? x is decreasing, okay, x is actually decreasing, the amount that the spring has been compressed. Make sure that's clear before we move on, okay? X is decreasing. What does that mean? It means that as time goes by, the spring is actually applying less and less force. Okay, the force in the spring, if you look at the definition up there, the force in the spring is going to also decrease over time. Okay, we can't relate that to a velocity time graph straight away. You know, if we had a force time graph, we might just see a graph where the force itself is decreasing, but we don't have that, okay? Instead, we want to look at the velocity time graph. One way we could 
relate it to the velocity is if you recall, you may recall, this is definitely an equation that's worth remembering. Newton's second law, F is equal to MA. We know that force is related to the acceleration. Okay, generally speaking, mass is constant. Okay, so if the acceleration, um, I, I should say actually, if force was to reduce, that would mean the acceleration would also reduce over time. So we can also say this. We can extend our logic further. And this is going to be a bit easier for us to relate to a velocity time graph. I'll do a separate explanation if need be, but th this is something you can look up as well. If we have a velocity time graph, the gradient or the slope of a velocity time graph gives us the acceleration. Okay, so if the acceleration is going down, that means we would be looking for when the slope of a velocity versus time graph is decreasing. Okay, we can look at the slope. Another way of thinking about the slope or the, the gradient, these are all interchangeable words, slope, gradient, or the steepness. The steepness of the curve, okay? So how steep the curve is, or the gradient, or the slope of a velocity time graph should be decreasing over time. This is what we have gathered from the equation that they've provided us and from the scenario that they've explained. Okay? So if we look at our velocity time graph up here again, the steepness, I'm going to kind of represent that with some arrows. At the very begin, uh, beginning, the curve is relatively steep, so or the slope. You can imagine trying to walk up this hill. Okay? It's pretty steep to begin with. But the steepness reduces, okay? So it's less steep, and then at the kind of top of the hill, it's not that steep anymore. So you can see that the gradient <clears throat> is actually decreasing. Okay, the gradient is decreasing over time. That means the acceleration is decreasing over time, which might be to do with the force, which might be to do with X. This is why option A is the answer. So the, the shape of this curve and the slope best represents what's going on in this problem. Okay, that's why A is the answer. I'm going to use another curve just to demonstrate why, for example, B is not the answer. So B looks like it's also a curve, but it's more like, more like this, a half pipe or like a ramp. What's going on here? The slope is shallow to begin with. Okay, so it's not as steep to begin with. Okay, so if I was to do the slope there, right drawing the slope or the tangent you can see that as you progress to the right as time goes by the curve becomes steeper and steeper the gradient actually increases that's not what we're looking for we're looking for when the gradient decreases okay that's why b is not the answer why is c and d not the answer because the beginning of those curves is linear this means a constant slope okay the surface if you were to walk on this surface the steepness of this surface is constant it's the same level of difficulty in terms of walking up it doesn't get steeper it doesn't get shallower okay it's constant so this is suggesting constant acceleration over time again that is not right okay we're looking for a scenario where the acceleration or the slope is decreasing, not constant. So that's why C and D are incorrect. Obviously, at this point, we would just go with option A. But to get a bit more understanding out of how to interpret the figures, let's have a look at the middle region as well. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of this. <clears throat> let's have a look at the middle region. Still got velocity versus time. If we look at the middle region, um, it's either going to be a straight line, <clears throat> a linear relationship, or it's a non-linear relationship, a bit of a kind of S bend. You can see options C and D. So what's going on in that middle section again? We are uh, being, this is where the ball, not we, but the ball is being projected vertically. So it's under the um, it's under the action of gravity. 
okay? It's under the influence of gravity, I should say. And we should know that if something is under the influence of gravity, then its acceleration, so the acceleration due to gravity will be negative 10 meters per second squared. Okay, with, with GAMSAT section three, we use 10 um, in year 12 and stuff like that. We use 9.8 or 9.81 meters per second. Okay, but usually we just use 10. But the most important thing about this <clears throat> is that it's negative. Okay, the acceleration is negative and it's a value. In other words, it's constant. So when we have gravity acting on an object, the acceleration is negative and constant. And what we said just now is that would be represented as a negative and a constant slope on a velocity time graph. So hopefully that makes sense why it would be a straight line going down. Okay, this has a negative slope and it's constant, Oops, negative. Okay, it's got a constant slope or gradient. Okay, so we've just explained why the first portion of option A is correct and why that region of the graph is correct as well. The final portion of uh, or, or region of the options is just going to be essentially a, a mirror image of what's going on at the very beginning. Okay, so the ball is going to go back onto the spring and now it's under the action of the spring, so we'll have a similar kind of shape. Okay. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Um, please give me a like if you would want me to make some more content. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions as well, just uh, shoot me a comment and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. All right. I'll see you guys later. Bye.